Good morning, good morning. This is Jacqueline Richard Simmons, J.D. Diamond, Jackie Deja, whatever y'all call me. And um, today, it's a new year. I know I had a wonderful time. This, um, ho this whole holiday season, I had a wonderful time. So I hope all of y'all did as well. I know a lot of people are sick due to them um, gathering up with family members and different things like that. That's something I didn't do. I did gather, but I was outside, so I was able to keep my space uh, to make sure I didn't get sick. However, today, I want to talk about the ignorance of customers. Um, you know, I'm big on customer service. I've gotten many awards. People have told me... Um, million and I can't so many times I can't even I can't even count that's all I was about to say a million and one times um my customer service is impeccable however it gets to a point where you get tired of people uh mistreating you and you have to stand up for yourself you know you just get tired you know um and that's one of the things that I deal with um, working at Instacart. You know, I deal with abuse from customers here in Charlotte every single day. There's not a day that go by that I have to, I, 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 <laughs> I deal with abuse. <laughs> okay. Um, and, you know, Instacart, they're the type of uh, company that, they respect what the customer says. However, you can't always do that because customers are people too and they lie too. Okay. And when I first started with um, Instacart, and I will say this, when I first started with them, I saw all kind of things. You know, um, I've pulled up, put packages down. Before I can pull off, people are trying to come and steal the packages. Um, I've seen where people will lie and say that they never received the packages, knowing you gave them the packages just so they could get a refund. Um, I've seen people call up and just say all kind of things um, just so they can get away with something. Okay? But see, this is my theory. You know, my theory is, <laughs> has always been... You let God deal with them, okay? Because, you know, karma comes back regardless. You know, it, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take it here. I'm going to say this. No matter what you do, whether you think you do it in the dark, God is watching, okay? And um, people have the tendency to feel like it's okay for you to try to hurt someone else. And think that it's not coming back to you. It will come back. That one moment when you say. Why am I sick? Why is my mom sick? Or why is my husband being mistreated? Or why am I being mistreated? Or uh, why this happened? Why that's happening? Because you have marked yourself. Or one of your family members have marked you. Okay. Now. When I say marked. I mean curse. If you read the Bible. All those that was God's people. That things went, went wrong. To them. You know people did wrong to them. They automatically get cursed. It's in the Bible. This is why I personally don't do wrong to people because I don't want my people being cursed. Now, I was watching a pastor the other day when he was saying, oh, you know, God is a good God. He is. But he also don't like us to disobey him. Especially untruth. So with that being said, you know, as we live our lives on a daily basis, 
and we're dealing with other human beings that choose the devil's way instead of God's way to get over. That's what they have to deal with long term for the rest of their life because they curse themselves. Now, we all have uh, family curses because we all have family members that would do wrong. But you don't want to continue to curse yourself so much to where you destroy yourself. And that's what a lot of these people do. Okay? Because you don't know who you're dealing with. That's the thing. You know, and I always tell people this too. This is why I treat everybody kind, everybody loving, you know, good morning, how are you? You know, because you never know who a person is. When you want to tell lies on something. Okay? You just don't know who they are. It's okay to complain, but not to lie. If you want to tell something, tell the truth. So this is one of the reasons why, you know, children of today, because they're watching, they've been watching for the last 18, 20 years. Don't respect customers and don't respect their elders. Because the older generation has this thing where they will lie. They would mistreat people. Come back and, and say that they didn't say it or they didn't do it. And then they wonder why a bunch of bad happens to them. But on the flip side... When you got people as young as the, the new generation coming up and they're trying to figure out life and y'all are deterring them from that with y'all nonsense, the picking, the, you know what I'm saying? Instead of putting yourself in those they shoes, just because you've never worked at, say, McDonald's or a supermarket food lion or just like with me doing Instacart. There's some people that look down on us like we're a piece of nothing because we're doing Instacart or they're nobodies because they're doing Instacart. So we can mistreat them and treat them any old kind of way. You don't know who I am. So don't, don't judge me and don't mistreat me. And it doesn't matter who I am. I'm here to service you because I service differently than others. Now, I made the choice because I did not want to go into the nursing homes and work um, during the time of COVID. So I said, I'll serve my community another way because God's people always serve their community and serve the people around them. It's a requirement of God's, okay? Everyone serves and everyone works in the Bible, okay? So with that being said, God didn't say we had to give all our money to the church. You can serve any way you want to serve. He just needs you to serve if you're on his team. That's how he sends people into your life to help you. Um, I didn't know my worth, um, until maybe a year later, you know, after some people were saying to me, like, you don't understand. Thank you so much. If you wasn't able to go, go and shop for me, I wouldn't be able to eat. Then on the flip side, you got people that want to look down upon the work that you do because you choose to serve. I treat all individuals the same, okay? Whether you give me a tip or you don't. If I take the batch, I'm going to try to make sure I get you the best product possible. 
Just like I would do somebody that gave me a $10 or $15 tip. Reason being because I chose the job. I chose to serve. But then when you got these kids and these this younger generation that they their parents say was rich or this is why we don't like old money. Because these young kids, see, the new generation, whether you got money or not, we make the kids work. Old money allowed their kids to stay home and do nothing. They would just give them money, give them money, give them money. So they don't even know what it's like to even to work or even serve God. That's why we want to get rid of old money. Because it has destroyed the people. They think they have one up over on, on, on the world because they're old money. However, you have the newer generation coming up and they see life differently. You know, the older people will say, well, why are they so disrespectful? And why are they like this? And why are they like that? But I can tell you why. Because after a certain point in life, you get tired. You get tired. Just like even in a relationship. Marriages, people get tired. And children acting out, people get tired. And then you put people back up against the wall and hurt not only them, but others because of your lies and your cheating and your, your uh, this, this dishonesty, period. This is why we don't like old money. This is why the world, we're trying to get rid of old money. They get, they don't get no respect. And I, you know, I come from both. I come from old money and new money. Old money was the money that my family made, turned over to me after they left, they lost their lives. New money is the money that I made for myself to continue on life. So I'm from both sides. I'm from old money and new money. This is why I can understand. But with that being said, you know, we still want to teach the kids to have some type of respect and customer service. You know, I've, I've went in stores and um, <laughs> say one, one customer needs something done. And well, I'm going to tell you a scenario. I had went to a store and there was this outfit I wanted, but the, the last one was on a mannequin. However, the person that was running the store at the time left all the customers standing in line to service that one customer because they were spending a little bit more money than the rest of them. So I said, no, no, no. Don't do that. I said, take care of the customers because you got to remember these customers are repeated customers. I may be here today going to mall. So take care of your customers. Should I have said that? Because the way this world is built on today is me, me, me. Don't care about nobody else. It's about what I want and what I feel. Even if I have to lie to get it. That's the way these people think today. And that comes from the older generation. So when y'all get angry at these young kids, blame yourselves because this is what you showed them. This is what you taught them. You've taught them to dictate. You taught them to lie. You taught them to, to point the finger and say, well, this is not right. And regardless of if it's proven or not, it's what I say go. How can you get mad 
at looking at yourself. If that's what y'all doing. You're looking at yourselves. In the mirror. They are a reflection from old, the older generation. So you can't be mad with something that you destroyed. Why is all the kids smoking weed? Well, all y'all smoked weed. Why is all the kids drinking? Y'all was always drinking in front of them. Y'all was always doing God knows what in front of these kids. Nobody wanted to lead in the last couple of generations. And this is the outcome. It causes a domino effect. So I don't knock the kids for some of the things they do. I know they respect me when I, when I come on grounds. Hey, Miss Jackie. Hey. We have our conversations. And if they do something I don't like, I let them know. And we laugh about it. It's not what you say. It's how you say it. It's not what you do. It's how you do it. And that's the problem with, you know, and I'm starting to feel like even with Instacart, you know, I, I used to be big on Instacart. You know, I would tell people, hey, you know, come work with Instacart if you need a couple extra dollars, if you need help, if you need to buy some time or whatever the case may be. But now I'm at the point where I, I'm starting to tell people, no, don't do it. I don't want you to go through the pain that I go through. I don't want you to feel the hurt. Yeah, it could be rewarding. But the hurt is too much for money. I'd rather service. Well, I'm going to say in the middle. Because you got your poor people that want to act rich and dictate. Then you have your rich people that want want to have control just because they have money. And in reality, they really don't have money because they have these big old homes and got to pay excessive bills. And they want to look rich. On, On the flip side... In actuality, they really not. Because if you was, you wouldn't be having somebody deliver your stuff. You would be going out to the store, picking up your own stuff. If you didn't want people... Let let me rephrase this a little bit, what I'm trying to say. You got the real rich that will actually come outside... You won't know they're rich. Okay? But the real rich don't let too many people do things for them. Because they don't trust people. See, that's how you know the real rich versus the poor rich. You know, it's it's two, two different type of rich people. The real rich is not going to let people come cleaning in their house. Cooking their food. Because they don't trust them. They do it themselves. But you won't know they rich. They won't allow people to even come to their house. They won't order stuff for people to even come and know their address. So we know the difference of who has how much money. However, those that's in the middle rich, majority of the time, those are criminals too. So you can't trust nobody. And this is why people stay to themselves and do things on their own so they don't have to deal with nonsense. 
If y'all follow me, y'all may not be following me. In other words, like the real rich don't have time for the nonsense of battling back and forth about how much chicken costs or um, this person uh, left my packages unattended and somebody stole them. They don't have the time for that. So you showing your worth when you go in and you start complaining about things that's unnecessary. When it didn't harm you. If I broke it down right. These people are looking out for people that's working, servicing the communities, going to DoorDash and uh, uh, Uber Eats and Instacart. This is a service that they choose to do for the people. They don't have to do anything. Now, how about if you wake up one day and say, I'm going to put an Instacart order in every Instacart and say, you know what? I'm not working today. What you going to do? You're going to find a way to the store because you got to eat. One way or another. You got to survive. So respect the people that's doing a service for you. Don't be putting lies out there. Especially when a company knows, you know, and and it's crazy because they, they say, like, I run up on people, like, you know, bringing their packages, and then say, you know, you're the first one that ever responded to me. And then I laugh. You know, I try to be nice. I try to be fair to people, you know, because some of the Instacarters don't even respond. And the reason why they don't respond is because they don't want to have no dealings with you. They don't want to have to uh, talk with you. They don't want you to see them. They just want to drop off your packages and keep it moving. I try to be a little bit nicer, but I get now why they the way they are. Because if you show too much care, these people will turn around and try to hurt you because you cared too much. So I get it. You know, the kids are teaching me this. And this is something that I will adopt. Because I'm getting tired too. I'm tired of being nice to people. I'm tired of helping people. And they look at you as if you're the sucker. And they can hurt you. But in actuality, I can hurt you even more. Choose your battles. And that's what people have to realize. You must choose your battles. Know what you're getting into. Don't lie. Tell the truth. So, yeah, things like that pisses me off with people, you know. And I'm just glad that I'm God's warrior. Because when we get these devil attacks like this, you know, for some people it could break them down. Me, it doesn't break me down. It just tells me it's time. It's time to move on and never turn back. That's what it tells me. Get rid of it. Because it's becoming a problem. Just like when I was working with Amazon and the guy pulled out the gun. I mean, a couple of things happened to me. But when he pulled out the gun, that was my last straw. That was God telling me, it's time now. Now, forget these people, forget their packages, because they don't give a damn what happens to you out here. All they care about is getting their charges and they, they, um, whatever they order. That's all they care about. And you out here could possibly lose your life. It's time for us to come at a halt again. Because God been trying to show people throughout COVID. You know, see, this thing is these people don't believe in God, so 
they would never understand. But it's time that God shows them a second time. I see this, this new variant is going to be the worst. That's what I see. Because the people still haven't changed. They still haven't changed. They don't care. All they want to continue to do is hurt, 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 and hurt. Lie, cheat, and steal. This is all they want to do. So God is going to have to show y'all one more time. This is why y'all need to put, pick up that book, the, the book of Revelations. So y'all can see the breakdown of how God did it in the, in the book of Revelations. By the last time. By that third time. That was the destruction. By that, by that last time. The destruction. Of the world. Because the people did not want to do right. This right now is. Proof of. Us. Learning to have faith in God. Tremendously. Over anything else. We will not do wrong. We would not do harm. I felt like an officer yesterday. A, a cop. <laughs> uh, doing Instacart. I wish I had cameras on me. You know, now I know how the officers feel. You know, you got uh, a person doing something. And you can't even prove that they've done something to react to why you're reacting the way you're reacting. Even with um, with um, Instacart. It's like they said to me, they say, well, um, what, what, what did they say? They, even, I, was, I, was, I was not Instacart, I was saying on with Amazon when the guy pulled the gun out. I wish I had a camera. So I could have taped how he was reacting. So we're going to live our lives being. Because you have to have law and order people. This is just what it is. You have to have order. So now y'all taking our world into everything we do. We're going to be recorded. Everything we, we say we're going to be recorded. Because people lie and people cheat. And people lose behind it. Granted, we got this the faith that, okay, God will get them. But meanwhile, people are suffering because of other, other people's lives. So what do you do? I get why people pack up their stuff and move to like places like Alaska where there's no people. I get it. Because people get tired. People want peace. And if I have to service you because God is saying, I need you to stand in the way right now and help those that need help. But if they're not appreciative and they're ungrateful, why should we be helping them? Granted, it's it's a good service. But in reality, why? Why should they get this help? Make them suffer. Just like we suffering. You know, and, and that's just my theory of watching and going through all of these different things. You know, I couldn't like some people would say to me, Jackie, I don't know how you do Instacart. It's just so frustrating and so stressful. You know, um, the, the customers, they just be doing too much. 
And I was saying to myself, well, maybe it's just me. You know, I'm able to take, I got tough skin. I'm able to take, not literally, y'all. But I have tough skin, meaning I can overlook some things that maybe others can't. And they say, well, how can you do it? But it comes to a point in life where you get tired too, even through that thick skin. That's just like if you own leather and you keep mistreating it, it's going to start to crack. Crack and crack until it can't be used anymore. The same with life and dealing with people in a whole. One thing I hate is a liar. If you're going to tell something, tell the whole truth. Don't lie because you want to do something that you, or how, how can I put it? You are conjuring up something to help save yourself because you over, over say spent or overdid something in your life. So you want to, you know, let me, let me tell you this, this other thing. A lot of people, this Instacart, they do. I'm using Instacart because I deal with a lot of people in Instacart and I see all walks of life in Instacart. I see the poorest people to the richest people. Uh, not the rich, rich, because like I said, the rich, rich is not even allowing you to shop for them. <laughs> okay. Because they want to pick out their own stuff. Um, but the so-called rich. Okay. And, um, I've seen a lot of walks of life and different people. I touch base with different people every single day. You got those that's grateful. Then you got those that are turning their heads up because you're a delivery driver. Okay. So when you see both walks of life, you say to yourself, You got some that's poor, some that's wealthy, and they act the same. It doesn't matter. Then you got some that's in the middle, and they understand. And they're grateful. I've had so many people be, I had, matter of fact, I'm going to tell you this story. I had this one lady, she was giving me the blues. Okay. And see, this is the other thing Instacart does to us, and it's not fair. I'm going to break that down to y'all in a minute. Um, but this one, I'm going to tell you about this one lady first. This one lady, she knew she was giving me the blues. She knew it. When I pulled up to our house, I uh, bought the packages, sat them down, and she snatched the door open, and she said, Jacqueline, I know I was giving you the blues. She said, but I'm such a picky person. And I get it. I'm a picky person. And you shouldn't have to go through that. So she gave me a $5 tip. She says, that's the tip for taking my BS. Because you took a lot of BS from me. And I just looked at her. And I was like, wow. You know, it's crazy when they can recognize that they're a piece of work. And pay you for, for, you know, their forgiveness. But then you got these people that will be a piece of work and not even give you a tip. That's just ungratefulness. You know, I, okay, I'm going to use this for instance. Yesterday I went to the store, right? And I took two batches. I mean, one batch that had two people. And this is what I hate that Instacart does. They give you one, two, and three uh, batches, right? Now, granted, these other people don't know that you have three people. So they're expecting you to dedicate yourself to them and them only. When technically you can, but then you can't. So sometimes you will get these batches where these people are just really what they call them Karens. Okay. So now you got one customer that, you know, they, they happy with every replacement. 
they're happy with everything. They're like, okay, well, you know, just pretty much come on because I need my stuff. But you still have another one that you got to service to and deal with their nonsense, which delays this other customer. So you can't really focus on this customer the way you really want to focus on this customer because you got this other customer that's a Karen and want to complain about every little thing. We don't put the stuff in the stores. That's number one. And as like, okay, I'm going to use this for instance. Like yesterday, I had wrote a lady about some chicken. Right? They didn't have the chicken that she asked for. Now, we all know COVID is starting to get bad again, you know, and, and stuff is running out of, off the shelves. So she never responded. So I said, okay, well, I'm going to give her a replacement. Don't you know when I went back to give her a replacement on chicken, all of it was gone? That was in a matter of minutes. That could have been her dinner for the night. I was lucky enough to find one pack of chicken for this lady. One pack. I said, that was God. You know, I'm trying to help her. They said, okay, we'll leave one, leave one pack (laughs) for the lady that didn't respond. Because if it would have been any longer, she wouldn't have gotten no chicken. All gone. Because she was like, well, I'll order two. Well, ma'am, it wasn't two there. And it took you two hours to come. I had another customer. I'm sorry. They were being a Karen. You can't always get 100% in life with things, especially when you're asking other people to do it. And I had to learn that, you know, through a lot of things that I do. This is why most of the time I do stuff for myself. (coughs) That way, if I fail, (coughs) I can't blame nobody but myself. And that's one of the reasons why. You know, a lot of people say, well, Jackie, you don't really ask for my help. I don't. Because if they do something wrong, I don't want to have to point the finger. I don't want to be that one to say, you did something wrong and it affected my whole life. So I think in 2022... Because I'm getting tired of the abuse and the lies with certain things. I'm going to, well, I already told y'all, I'm changing my career. I'm changing my career this year. Um, This is something that I thought about for many, many years. I just wasn't ready, I guess. But now I'm ready. God is showing me more and more. Reasons why I need to change my career. Because being in the field and dealing with too many customers and being forced to deal with too many customers at, at, at a time. When you walk into a store, when you walk into a store and you're on the line, I noticed QT does it. They will open up two cash registers. Now, I don't know if people know the meaning of customer service. They'll open up two registers and have one customer over here and one customer dealing with two customers at the same time. How can you put your attention solely on me if you're dealing with two different people at the same time? It can't be done. So the customers are looked at as just numbers, pretty much. And I get that they get angry because they're being mistreated throughout the process. And I'm going to tell y'all. Yesterday, I had a full charge. 
This one customer was so picky and want, want me to go back and do this and do that. And I knew that this customer was going to cause me problems. I knew it because the way they was doing things. I see a lot of customers do this too. They'll put in an order knowing that based on... And see, these are the things that Instacart allowed them to do. And this is why we suffer as the, the shopper. They'll put in a small order so their, their fee will be less. Because you have fees based on the pounds of how, how much something is, how many large items. It's different various ways on based on they, they, they charge you. And then most of the time you want to get a tip. So what people will do is put their order in very small and then start. I experienced this the other day. It pissed me off. Because now I'm almost done with your shopping and now you want to add five more items. Now I got to run all over the store and find these other five items. It's a good feature. But it should be a limit to how many things you can add. That's just my theory. <clears throat> because it's not fair to the shopper, especially when they have one or two people that they're trying to shop for. I get why Instacart doubles the batches. They do it to help, you know, the, the Instacarters make more money and you go into the store one time for two people, which is makes sense. But it's not working and it's being destroyed by the customers. Once again, something is always being destroyed by the customers. This is why things have to be put in writing because people will take advantage. <clears throat> and that's just what, what it is on a customer side. Customers are bad because they feel like they spending money so they can do what they want to do. Money is power. However, I couldn't understand why the kids were being so ignorant towards, you know, in a new way of living. Meaning, if a customer act irate, you could act irate right along with them. That's the way things have been. And I'm at the point where I respect it. I respect it. There's two sides to a story and then there's the truth. So with that being said, <clears throat> I would like to keep, um, I'm not saying that people should get crazy with it because it can get ugly and people could go to jail and different things like that. Leave it to an extent. But if a customer want to act out, by all means, protect your mental, protect yourself. And that's where I'm going with it. I've made my final decision on that. Okay. I had told y'all I was going to continue to investigate it and continue to, to look into it. And they brought it up yesterday on the radio. And then I, it's crazy. They brought it up on the radio yesterday and I experienced the same thing. So I'm like, God said, it's time. It's time. If people want to be mean, give it back to them. And then ask God to forgive you. You deal with God on your own. Because people will take advantage when you turn the other cheek. So if they want the blues, you give them the blues. Because that's the thing. <coughs> and see, that's how I used to live my life too. I will give people exactly what they give me. And then they hated it. But this is the energy that you gave me. So I'm just giving it right back to you because I'm not carrying that negative energy on me. I'm not doing it. So the Holy Spirit told me, give it back. We don't want that. Take it. You know, and people would say, Jackie, you so mean sometimes. And I'm like, no. It's because my spirit tells me we will not be carrying that. 
because they want to be evil and they want to be misleading and they want to be liars and they want to be thieves. We're not carrying that energy. I don't know if y'all remember about five months ago. I, 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 I don't know if I wrote it on Facebook. I wrote it somewhere. I said we are in a God's warfare. I said, all, I, uh, all us Christians, put on your armor because it's time. I meant what I said. It's the Christians against the devils right now. And we have to continue to go to war. And that's just what it is. I had to accept it. I was like, no, no, God is going to find another way. God is going to find another way. But he's not. We have to protect our energy. We have to protect the faith that we have. We have to protect it. We can't keep getting beat, beat down because we're Christians and people are misleading us and, you know, mistreating us. We can't do that no longer. I was going to make a trip up north because I wanted to see how they act up there, you know, but I can't get there yet. So I have to make this whole decision based on what I'm experiencing here. When us Christians and these young kids are done with you people, y'all ain't going to even want to spend no money. And we done with you people. Like, you know, you know, I don't even want to go to the store. I, I, I just lay here and die. Because y'all did this to us. And God is telling us to protect our energy. God is telling us to protect ourselves. Even though he has us covered. Don't mean that you could continue to abuse us. And mistreat us. Because we are one to turn the other cheek. So I get it. For the youth, I get it. I get it. Y'all don't have to like keep showing me examples no more online. I get it. Because I'm going through it right along with you guys. I had an issue yesterday. <clears throat> an older lady snapped at the store. My daughter was was trying to help her because she was older and she was moving slow and and she just snapped and went on for my daughter. And my daughter just looked at me. She said, I'm going to leave ma before I say something that ain't right. I said, that's right. You know, I was saying in my mind, that's right, cover, the, cover your tongue in the blood of Jesus. Don't say nothing. And this is the other thing, too. You know, they were saying that Cooper was saying that he didn't want to close the schools no more and he didn't want to do this. My daughter goes to a charter school, so they get to do what they want to do. But for the other kids, if they didn't close the schools, I, I feel sorry. You know, um, the, the people are not listening out at the stores. CDC sent down another, uh, what you call it, saying, hey, we want everybody to wear their masks. They're not listening. You know, and it's mainly the white people. You know, I'm going to just be honest with y'all. Y'all know I keep it 100. It's mainly the white people. They don't listen. They're very disrespectful, you know, they don't care, you know, and then everybody gets the blame for the things that they do, you know, and it's, it's not fair, but <clears throat> I do say they're going to let y'all die this time. You know what I'm saying at first though, you know. They um they close down the country again. And I thought about it. Mm-mm. I'll let y'all die this time. Last time they was afraid. to let y'all die. Because they were standing in the way of God's will. That's why it's not going in the way. So we don't, they're going to let them die now. So that way, <laughs> God's will will be done. Y'all know I, I talk deep. I talk deep because I do a lot of study. And this is what I do. You know, I do so much studying that people don't even believe that I'm the person that I am.
because they've never encountered a person of my enlightenment. You know, um, <laughs> this is why I don't deal with many people because the people are not enlightened the way I'm enlightened and have the knowledge like I have the knowledge. So they can't see what I see. You know, they be like, oh, you know, Jackie crazy because she she's saying this and saying this. But then when it comes to pass and you're like, damn, she told us that. Yeah, I told y'all. Because I was able to see, see when y'all couldn't, y'all couldn't see at all because y'all was blind. Because I'm always doing my research. I'm always watching. I'm always paying attention. I'm always analyzing. You know, that's why we got to get rid of that over the kids had that thing. That's one thing kids we are not adopting for this new generation that, oh, you're over, over, always overthinking. You must overthink every situation before you react. If you don't. The outcome can hurt you. So there's some things that we do need to keep in this new um, era, but there's some things that we need to get rid of, especially with these older ones, because they haven't destroyed these people. And that's just, we just need a whole do-over. Okay, we can't be re Well, God can get us to be reborn. I saw a process the other day. Um... Uh, but remember, I told y'all when I went blind um, after praying, that's a process right there for him to reborn us, you know, um, and, and uh, keep enlightening us. However, um, that's a whole nother story. That's a whole nother podcast, y'all. So I'm not going to even go deep into that. But the point that I'm trying to make is when God has a will for something and it it doesn't work as planned is because God wanted something to happen. So I'm I'm taking it as this is when it's going to happen. This is the moment that God was waiting for to see how many people is going to be faithful to him. God didn't say be stupid. He just said, be faithful to me, and I'll take it from there. You got to let God do his work. Everything happens for a reason. And, you know, I, had, I was talking to someone yesterday that brought to my attention. They was reading the book of Revelations. And I've read the book of Revelations over and over and over. And it just seemed unreal, you know, with some of the stuff, you know. And then... You know, I have to take it back to Genesis to understand stuff, understand some stuff. And um, the person had brought up the book of Revelations to me. And I'm, I'm saying to myself, like, you know, yeah, we're in the book of Revelations. But the people are not complying like God wants them to. So what's going to be the outcome? They feel like they're going to die anyway, so... And I saw a pastor talking about that yesterday. Oh, well, well, God is going to kill us anyway, so I might as well do what I want. Not necessarily, because God accepts all those, all of us that decide he wants to, they want to turn the leaf over and come to God. He accepts everyone. Even if you have done the worst things ever. But then you have to be faithful to him and loyalty to him. Have loyalty for him. If you're a disloyal person, you can't be loyal to God. Okay? And that's just what it is. And I tell people that all the time. You know, like, loyalty starts within within yourself. Loving yourself. You know? And if you can't have loyalty with yourself and analyze situations to have loyalty for other people, you can't have loyalty for God. So that's something that you have to change within yourself. You know, um, loyalty is easy to to to, to um, give off, but if you don't love yourself and you don't, you're not loyal to yourself. You don't know what it's like to be loyal to someone else. You you don't you can't understand it, the process. Okay, and sometimes we can be over loyal loyal. 
because we're trying to do things God way because we, we are loyal to God. Do y'all understand why God has to sometime clean the earth because he wants us to be so good and teaches us to love so hard. However, it puts us through a lot, a lot of pain and the devil's people are not getting it. It's a choice for you to do the things that you do. So this is where God's people have to fight back. It's not we turn the other cheek anymore. You have all these religions right now coming together. It's in the book of Revelations. That's the reason why we were meant to come together to bring the force of God into more people. It talks about the seven stars in the book of Revelations. Those seven stars represent the religions. We got people teaming up as devils. That's the three-headed beast. Because they feel like they have to have one to fight the Holy Spirit, one to fight Jesus, and one to fight God. So they want to come in threes now how God does it. Pay attention. We're in a God's warfare. Because these people won't get it right. And I'm personally, I'm tired. So I was, I was trying to, I, I said I was going to be the last one standing. Because I know I got tough skin. And I was able to take a lot of abuse. But it comes to a point where it has to stop. So I'm not, I'm about to join the team and let's go to war. This is what y'all drove me to. This is what y'all drove them to a long time ago. But y'all just didn't understand it. This is Jacqueline Richard Simmons, JJ Diamond, Jackie Deja, whatever y'all call me. Y'all all have a safe day. It's raining here in Charlotte like crazy. I mean, just coming down a little while ago, it was like pouring like crazy. I don't know if y'all was able to hear it, but it was just coming down, down, down. But um, y'all just stay safe, you know. Remember the inclement weather out there, so don't be speeding down the roads. You know, um, windshield wipers got to be working, you know. Good thing this is not a snowstorm because we would really be messed up. So I'm, I'm blessed to be where it's just rain and not snow. But you guys, take care. Y'all have a good day. I'll talk to y'all tomorrow.